So I, I was saying that I feel like I should listen over and over again to the John Mayer song, Waiting on the World to Change, because <laughs> I think that's what we're all doing right now. Um, I, I, before we came on to the show, I was looking at my sheets. Um, two weeks ago, I made trades in Palo Alto Networks, CrowdStrike, and Generac. The trade in Generac looks like a banana that's been sitting out on the counter for six months right now. It looks awful. I sold some S&P futures on the morning of the inflation report, and I haven't done anything since. Haven't made a single trade since then, and I think that's indicative of the environment in which we're speaking towards right now. We have no clarity on earnings. We have no clarity on inflation. We have no clarity on the tariffs. Now, what we do have is an overwhelming amount of pessimism. And that's where potentially a trade opportunity exists. Because Chairman Powell spoke a lot today about two things. First, he spoke about headline inflation. And then there was this subliminal message as it relates to fiscal policy. So we do have solutions for both of these things. And as it relates to headline inflation, let's inject some degree of optimism in what's an overwhelming pessimistic environment. And let's look at commodity pricing. And let's look at the fact that lumber, which was 1477 in March, is down to 620 today. Which look, let's look at copper and wheat, which are down 20% since their March highs. Natural gas, two weeks ago, was $9.66. It's 685 today. And the price of oil in the last five days is down 12%. Does that mean that the market has found a bottom? No. But it does mean that there's an opportunity, Melissa, to kind of extract some of that overwhelming pessimism if we're going to get some relief in the commodity sector, mm -hmm. which is really where the challenge for inflation resides itself.